everybody. Welcome back to my channel. We are back with a review of Life After Lockup. This is season two, episode 18, Second Chances. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. First things first, want to give a couple shout outs. Um, first off, McCallum Knights, baby. That's who I'm repping today. That's my old high school. What, 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 what? And specifically, I'm repping for my nephew. I don't know if y'all can see this or not. Wooten. Yeah, baby. That's my nephew. He's cold when he plays football for McCallum. And he cuts hair. So if you're in the Austin area, look him up. He's on Instagram as well. D Woo Blends. D W O O B L E N D Z. I'll put his information in the description box below. My nephew called with it. He cut hair. He, he's a personal trainer as well. He's cut up and he's rugged and all that. If I can get a picture of him somewhere right about here. I'm going to put a picture of him in if I have it. Yes, that is my nephew. And he does the damn thing. Look him up, y'all. Um, second shout out I want to give is to Chris Gemma. I believe it's spelled Gemma Gemma. It's G-I-M-A. Chris Gemma. Chris Gemma took the time out to give me my first negative comment. And Chris, I thank you for that, okay? Um, he, re he um, put a post on my previous catfish video that I did. And he said that um, this was stupid. I can't believe I watched 10 minutes of this. Now, Chris, I want to thank you for a couple of reasons. One, I know it can be very busy charging people five cents a riddle to cross the bridge. And I uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy day trolling and, and trying to get your bag secure. And you came to leave a negative comment on my page. So, I mean, on my channel and on my video. Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting a little confused. I feel so special. Nobody, <laughs> like, yo. But uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Thank you for that. Also, I wanted to tell you, you having a YouTube channel yourself, I seen it. Bless his heart. But you do know how YouTube works. You know that the more watched, um, pe the more minutes that people watch, the better that that is uh, for you, for your channel. So thank you so much. You sat and watched 10 minutes of something that you hated, that you didn't want to watch, that you thought was stupid. And then you took the time out to comment on it. So thank you so much. You to go, I'm sorry, you to troll. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. So let's get into the review, okay? So y'all, we have Lizzie and Scott. Lizzie done saddled up that horse and baby, she ain't ride to skate no more. She done went down to California. She finna go do a pop-up on uh, Scott's ass. Scott has no idea that she's coming. Now, you know, she lied to her daughter. She told her daughter that she was not gonna go see Scott, that it was a wrap, that was it, because you know, her daughter tried to give her an ultimatum. But Lizzie... She's out of jail now, and so her mind is clear, and I guess she's seeing, like, okay, I can't get these niggas out here on these streets, necessarily, like, I was getting them in prison. It was a lot more easy. Now, nah, here, I got to work for my shit. So, she's like, mm, and I think a part of her really probably does love Scott. I, I, I think she does. So, she's going down there for the pop-up on his ass, right? She gets to his house, his homegirl, Shirlene, Miss Shirlene, <laughs> shout out to the Christie Show. I love the Christie Show, man. Miss Shirlene, we gonna call it Miss Shirlene. So Miss Shirlene opened up the door and Lizzie's like, uh, excuse me, is you Jasmine? And she was like, no, I'm Shirlene. She's like, okay, well, where's Scott at? She's like, okay, hold on one second. She's like, oh no, I'm coming in. So the bitch don't, she don't, you know, walked on up in the house. Soon as Scott seen her, Scott got happy as hell. He was, mm, he was happy as hell. He got to see his 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 prison prison bitch. He was so goddamn happy. He hugs her. They hug each other back. She's like, oh, I got something for you, Scott. Hold on right here. It's right second right now. Bam, slaps his ass, said that's for cheating on me. She says that when they broke up, um, you know, last season, he threw her ring and he threw her cell phone in the toilet at the hotel that they were at, and he went off and left, and that's how they ended their relationship, right? So, um... During that time, he started dating his friend Jasmine, another sister. You know, Scott. Scott like him some chocolate in his in his life, baby. He like that. Um, 
He needs a little, I ain't even mad at Scott. Ew. But um, he was dating Jasmine, this other chick, for a little while. And so after that fizzled out or whatever, I don't know if him and Charlene are together or she trying to get with him or whatever the situation is with that. So he tells her, no, I was not cheating on you. We weren't together, yada, yada, yada. He sees that she has the ring on that he smuggled up under his balls into the prison to give to her. Now, nigga, that's love. Nigga, you love her. You smugged in a ring under your nasty balls and she wearing it right now because she already knew that, that was gonna catch your eye too catch that i seen you i seen you lizzie girl so she tells scott she wants to take him out on a real date that um and she wants to pay for it scott caught himself trying to play hard to get talking about i'll let you know nigga you let me know what bye boom bang pow you already know she's gonna be there so she tell him um we ain't finna think about nothing i'll be here at 10 o'clock in the morning lizzie that nigga gonna be ready at 804 waiting on your ass at the door like this Trying to sniff on your ass, looking for it in the daytime with a goddamn flashlight. He gonna be there. But I'm, that's cute. I want to see how that little day gonna go. Moving right along. Next, y'all, we have Andrea and Lamar. So it's crema time in L.A., y'all. And so the family is all together. Lamar, Andrea, the, the three kids, Nyla, Tennyson, and Priscilla. They're all together. Um, Lamar went out and bought a Christmas tree. They're decorating the Christmas tree together as a family. Y'all didn't see so crazy, but that is one of the most funnest times in a house with me and my two calves. Is us decorating the Christmas tree. Or if me and um, my little one are together wrapping presents for his dad. Or if me and his dad are together wrapping presents for him. Or if they're together wrapping my presents. It's fun. So I thought that was real, real cute. And so um, afterwards, they're done um, decorating the Christmas tree he tells them Lamar tells them all right well I'm, I'm gonna go hang with my folk and instantly Nyla the daughter and Andrea they they get pissed because um Nyla was like wait a minute so you mean to tell me that after us decorating this tree now you're gonna go hang with your people so that means that you had this prepared all day long that that's what you wanted to do and he's like no I, I mean no it's not that's just what I wanted to go do I want to go hang out with my people so she's like well no Nala starts getting mad and she starts going in on his ass little mom was giving it to him and I was here for it because he knew from the get-go that he wanted to go there and do that and the point that the, the baby girl was trying to make is you could have said that you because next what they wanted to do was watch uh, movies and eat cookies, you know, Christmas holiday type shit. He didn't want to do that. He was saying that Christmas, well, it's not what he was saying to him, but he was saying in his green screen that Christmas is not a big deal to him. he been in prison 18 plus years, damn near 20 years. Christmas meant they got a chocolate milk and maybe an extra pie or something like that. So he's not really big into celebrating Christmas, so it's not a big deal to him. But he don't realize that it's a big deal to really them kids. You know what I'm saying? So, and they really don't want him going and hanging with his family because that's the same family that he got in trouble with in the first place. And that's what they saying. Like, you finna go back and hang with the same motherfuckers that got you in the shit that you was in in the first place. You finna go out and hang with the same family that had the gun that got you locked up in the second place. Like, why would you do that? But like, he's saying like you know he he just wants he's free he's not on parole he's not on probation he just wants to finally get a chance to get out there and and to get, can reconnect with some of his family that he hadn't seen the whole time that he was locked up and it's like the family has a point like we've been there for you we've been holding it down for you the whole time that you were locked up your people wasn't there holding it down for you or four or five years whatever however long they've been together and your family is they weren't there for you when locked up they weren't putting money in your books they weren't sending you nothing and now that you out now you want to go back there and you want to hang out with them but they gotta understand that nigga been institutionalized he been institutionalized for damn near 20 years so the hood is what he knows that's what he left and that's what he coming back to so i mean yeah, he hadn't seen his people. He hadn't, I mean, they hadn't been there when he was locked up, but you never know. Niggas got to work. People got jobs. People got other obligations. Not saying that that's no excuse that you can't go and visit him in prison, but what I am saying is that you got to, you know, he understands that. And regardless of the fact, he want to go hang with his people. So that's what he goes and he does because eventually he gets pissed off. Nala gets pissed off. Everybody gets pissed off. And so, you know, they walk away from the situation. So he goes to the hood. They go to the soul food restaurant and, um, he hanging with his people and his people are asking him like are you really in love with her are you in love with the situation because you got a you know a warm 
place to lay your head. You got warm meals. You got living cool cat. Like, is that the reason why you with her? Or are you really in love with her? He says he's in love with her and he has to be there for his family that he made the promise to be there for her and her kids and that he wants to be there and he wants to do that for her. He also says that she wants him to convert to being a Mormon. Now, Andrea, I can tell you right now, that's a hood nigga. That's a low that gangster set tripping banging. He ain't finna convert to shit. If anything, I see him converting to be a Muslim, but I damn sure don't see him converting to be no Mormon. He ain't finna do all of that. But that's how that goes with the whole little situation. We gonna see how that goes. Hopefully they should get this shit together because um, that's too much. That's too much. That's too much. Brittany and Marcelino, y'all. Marcelino pissed me off this episode. And I like Marceline. I'm starting to like him more because I understand him. He was a military man. So he has a lot of aggression in him. My my father's been a, was, was a military man. My other father, they I understand what certain levels of aggression come from and certain levels of protection come from. But he can be an asshole sometimes. And this time his asshole level was on level 10. So earlier that day, Sasha goes, I'm sorry, Sasha, um Brittany goes and has dinner with her homegirl, Sasha. Now, you know, Sasha is facing um, 10 to 30 years for a robbery, double homicide. She wasn't the trigger man, but she was there involved in it. And so she decided to take a plea deal instead. So her sentencing is coming up. Hopefully she only has to do 10 years, which damn, that's a lot of goddamn time. But Sasha has been in prison before. Bitch, I already know how that go. Hopefully she don't have to do none of that. And that's Brittany's best friend, y'all. So she... I would, ooh, a part of me would die. And Brittany even says that, like, Marcelino has to realize when she goes to prison, a part of me is going to go with her. If my best friend, if my best friend had to go to fucking prison, I would be fucking devastated. I would, I would lose my shit. If they had to go to prison for 10... I would lose my shit. My best friend, she ain't ever been arrested before in the first place. If that bitch had to do 30 minutes in jail, she gonna die. She can't do that. Trina, Trina, you would die. Ain't no, but no. I, uh, girl, no. So anyways, she gets back to the house later on from that. She takes a ride share home because she had been drinking. So she wants to do the responsible thing. She's not drunk like she said, but she had had a drink earlier that day. And Brittany not stupid. The fucking cameras is around everywhere. She don't want to do nothing dumb enough to get her ass back locked up. So she took a ride share home like what a responsible person is supposed to do, right? So, as soon as she gets home, Marcelino's instantly pissed. Like, okay, so I see you coming in kind of late. Like, like, what's happened? What's your excuse for that? And she's like, are you serious? I was with Sasha, but my best friend. You know, I'm trying to spend some time with her before she has to go back to fucking prison. And he's like, okay, and I see I didn't hear the car pull up neither. So, I'm guessing, like, how did she get home? I took a ride share home, motherfucker. I was drinking. I didn't want to goddamn drive. Cameras and shit around. I know how these white folks work. I, I, no, I'm not trying to do that. He gets pissed and says that he... He, he's mad at her because she's not respecting the schedule. Now, you remember last um, review I was telling you, she was saying that he goes out and he plays poker three to four nights a week. He don't get back till six, seven o'clock in the morning. That's different from her coming home. It still looked like the sun was halfway up. It looked like it's probably like eight, nine o'clock at night. It didn't even look like it was late. Now, I don't know if it was later. I ain't never been to LA. I don't know how the sun going down works over there, but I know how it works over here. Like right now, it's, what time is it? right now. It's 6.45 right now, and the sun is still bright, shining, bright out there. So, I don't know how it work over there. Anyway, it looked like it was not that goddamn late at night she was coming back home, but Marcelino instantly tripped, got pissed. Brittany, like, all right, fucker, you want to trip over the motherfucking car? I will walk my ass back to the restaurant and get this goddamn car. So, he starts to follow her down the street. It's not about that. It's you're not respecting the schedule. You're not respecting the schedule. No, it's the point that she was hanging with Sasha, and you don't like Sasha, which I don't get that, which he likes Sasha at first. I don't understand why now he has a problem with her. I, I don't get that. He probably got a crush on her on the cool. He seemed like an immature little asshole that would do some shit like that. But anyways, I, I still it's still a part of me that likes Marcelino though. I, I like him, but he's an asshole. So she finally tells him, you know what? Fuck you in that goddamn car. You mad at me over the damn car? You go get the car. So she gets pissed off. She goes and walks back. That would have been me. Fuck you. Nigga, you mad over the damn car? Go get the car. I ain't finna go get it. Hmm. <laughs> Y'all, Clinton Tracy. Lord, Lord, Lord. So they about to go meet the family, right? Tracy got five hours left and she off parole. What do they want to go do to celebrate? They going to Vegas. 
Why you want to take this bitch to Vegas to celebrate her getting off parole? She said she done been been under the white folks' grip for the last 10 years, whether it's been parole, probation, or her ass actually being incarcerated. And you want to take her to Vegas. Don't do no shit like that. That's like taking a crackhead to a crackhead convention and telling him he can't have no samples at the free free vendor spots. What you mean I can't have no samples at the free crack? I'm a crackhead. No, you what? Don't do that. Don't do that. They finna go meet his mama. They finna go have a brunch. They in there looking for Tracy for something to wear, right? Clint asked her, like, you ain't got no pants with no holes in them? No, she ain't got no pants with no holes in them. No, she, no. <sighs> Tracy, bless her heart. Tracy, Tracy is Clint goddess, y'all. She is his fucking goddess. So finally, they find something to put together, and they running late. At this point, they're already 45 minutes late, right? She like, oh, well, I, I want to make sure I got this together. She took her little pink um, weave out of hair, had it sitting in the sink and all that. Tracy, I ain't mad. She's trying to get her shit together. She like, I want mama to accept me, baby. I'm taking my pink out of my hair. I'm looking for my less holy pants. I'm going to do this damn thing, and that's what she does. And they get there. Uh, I think it said on the screen, 75 minutes late. Nigga, what? You trying to make a good impression on the mama, you get the 75 minutes late. Soon as they walk in the door, Tracy's like, oh, um, thank you so much, Miss Alice, for, for inviting me over. Your house is so lovely. Thank you so much for having me. Shit. Mama wasn't having none of that friendly shit. Mama said, y'all late. It said, what, what the hell? Daddy done went back to work. Um, You want to tell me why you late? No, I don't blame daddy. I done did the same goddamn thing. Daddy probably like, y'all got me out here missing goddamn good ass money. He was probably on his lunch break on top of that because she said he went back to work. So that nigga was already at work. He done spent his whole lunch break waiting on y'all to come. You supposed to be making a good impression for him. He the one that got your ass the dinner in the first place and you show up late. Goddess, you fucked up, goddess, already. So she like, y'all come on over here and sit goddamn down. Uh-huh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I know my house nice, whatever. So they get to eating or whatever, right? Quick side note, Clint Nails was so goddamn nasty. His nails irked my goddamn spirit. It was so nasty. I mean, dirt and shit all up in his goddamn nails. Now, see, that couldn't have been my mama. My mama would have told your ass before you even sat down at her table. We grown adults. She'd have told you, you wash your hands, go wash your hands. And he's sitting up there holding the croissant, eating it. With his nasty fucking hands. Mama, I blame you. You should have told his nasty ass to go because you know he going to do anything you say. Any A Tracy. You was holding his hand. I hope the I hope at least you washed your goddamn hands because that shit was nasty. Oh, it was nasty. Oh. So mama goes in and she tells him, like, look here. She starts crying, like, look here. I can't do no drugs now. I just can't do no hard drugs. I can do a little weed. Because I probably smoke a little weed. No, I'm just playing. She ain't what it. But she did say she don't do hard drugs. The less hard drug is weed. Now, come on now. Don't be stupid. So, Tracy tells her, like, look, you know, I've been dealing with this for 10 years. And this drug habit has taken over me. And I just want to, I want to be a better person. I get off parole. Um, I have to go sign my papers later. And I'm just trying to be a better person. Tracy pulled it together for this dinner. And I give you kudos to you, Tracy. She looked halfway, she looked halfway good. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She looked halfway good. She was speaking with manners. She didn't embarrass nobody. She did good, and I'm proud of her for this. And so, Mama says she's going to see where it goes, because Mama did say that she wants a relationship with her. And my, I can see that, because Clint is the only child. Clint, the only chance they got, man. They the only chance, Clint. You got to you gotta pull through, man. They want grandbabies, and I know they don't want no dumbass grandbabies now. I'm going to need you to pull it together, you and your goddess. Y'all can do that, Clint. So we're going to see what happens from that little situation, okay? Clint also said that he's done some things that he knows that his mother would not be proud of, neither. And he just feels so bad holding secrets from her. Now, it could be the fact that they're not telling her that they're going to go to Vegas to celebrate um, Tracy getting off um, pro parole. But at the same time, I think that nigga been smoking that shit. And that's what he's talking about. Because you can see from the Clint that started to the Clint that's now. Yes, Tracy is stressing this nigga the fuck out. But he been, mm-hmm. He been doing that glass stick? I know he has. I seen it. I see it all over you. Yep. 
Whoo, y'all. Let me fix my ponytail real quick for this. My favorite little hot mess of a couple, y'all. That is Megan, Michael, and Sora. Sarah about to deliver any goddamn time now. No, that's right. She was calling to um confirm her induction for the next day. She about to pop this baby. She big than the motherfucker, y'all. Looking at Sarah, oh bitch, you make me not miss being pregnant, even though I had an easy pregnancy. I don't miss that shit. I don't miss it worth the damn. Her manly homegirl is there, and her manly homegirl is there to comfort her. Of course, you know, she's, her and Michael are into it right now for the whole Megan situation. And her manly homegirl tells her, you know, she's glad that Mike ain't there, and she hoped that he ain't there for the delivery. I got a feeling because she trying to slide in and be the baby daddy. I see you, boo. So Megan go out there to see Mike now. She can't go in the house. She can't be on the porch. The only way she can kick it with Mike is if he is on that goddamn uh, in the driveway because he can't leave the house. So they literally have to hang out in the driveway in her car in two below goddamn weather. It look like it's eight degrees out there. Snow this goddamn high. But they got to kick it. Hey, she got heat in that goddamn Jeep. So they got to kick it out there in the goddamn car. Oh, well. So he gets her to go in the back seat, y'all. He asked her for some sucky sucky. You just asked this bitch on camera to suck your little peen, really? Y'all, Mike, I can't deal with Mike. Mike is the epitome of a trifling ass nigga. He is, I'm sorry, but Mike is so trifling. He has the potential to be somebody great. He really does. And you got beautiful babies. These babies are going to one day see this because social media can't do nothing but go up from here. Ain't no telling. When they get our age, they can probably mm, think about it and see the shit happening in their goddamn head. But Mike, dog, oh, he's such an asshole, right? So she finally tells him this secret. And I knew it. I fucking knew it. She wasn't pregnant. She tells him, okay, so you remember your homeboy Rock when I had to get that money from him, right? So apparently... She had to go and get some money from his homeboy that Mike owed her for a lawyer. D bitch, you was paying lawyer fees to... You know what? But I still like Megan. And let me tell you why I like Megan. Hold on. Let me tell you why I like Megan. Hold up. I like Megan because she's naive and she's so... She's older but yet she's young in the mind mike is her first love he her first peen he put it down he's her first she i mean he he done did like that's her first for everything so i can see where she's in love with him where she just can't see past mike and so a part of me my heart reaches out to her because she's young and she don't know no better but at the same time a part of me just want to just grab her by this part and just like just shake her to make her realize like mike ain't the one girl oh i kind of shook my ponytail out a little bit that's what i want to do to her though but mike ain't the one girl you could do so much better than him so much better than him but she tells him okay well when i had to get the money from your homeboy rock me and him started flirting and so we started talking we started communicating whatever right and so instantly he gets pissed he like, what you mean? So what, did y'all fuck around? Was y'all together? She was like, no, nah, we didn't fuck around. We didn't kiss. We didn't do none of that. That's what she tells him, right? He instantly gets pissed. He's like, nah, see, man, that's some whole ass shit right there. She's like, what you mean some whole ass shit? I found out afterwards in the heat of the moment that you are married, you have a baby, and you didn't had a whole nother baby on me. So yes, I was vulnerable. Like she tells him, you annihilated my heart. So what did I want to do? I got back at you. Well, she didn't tell him that she got back, but I believe that she got back with got back at him, but that was her way of getting back at him by hooking up with one of his friends. Now, she claims that they didn't fuck around. They didn't do nothing. They didn't kiss none of that. That's what she says up front, right? So he's like, okay, so if I call him, he gonna say the same thing, right? She like, oh, what, that we kiss? Yeah, that's it. You know you done fucked up, right? You, 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 you know you done fucked up, right? Because first off, you lied and you said that you didn't do anything with him. Then you slipped up and said you kissed him. Now, everybody know the rule, right? The, 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 the add some rule, right? When a motherfucker and you you know they lying to you, if a motherfucker say, no, I ain't do nothing. All we did was kiss. 
there was some touching going on. There was some feeling going on. Quite honestly, I'm going to tell you either one of the two things that happened. Either she slobbed the knob or they really did mess around. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Megan is, she, niggas can run game on Megan. Mike ran game on Megan for two years from behind a jail cell and they ain't even met face to face, hugging, none of that. And he ran that game on her. He was able to keep her after finding out that he was married with the baby, had a whole nother baby on her, and she's still there. He ran that game on her. They messed around. She slobbed the knob. One or two happened. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all that's what happened because it was too obvious. It was very apparent that she was lying. I'm sorry, Megan. I love you, girl. My heart goes out to you. But at that moment, you were lying. Y'all messed around. A lot more happened, right? Mike feels betrayed. His heart is broken. Nigga, you for real, yo. You mad. You mad or no? For real? His heart is broken. He feels betrayed. So we gonna see what's gonna happen on the next next episode, y'all. This episode was, it should have been named the Hot Ass Mess. Look at this shit. That should have been named this, look at this shit. Cause y'all, this episode was a mess. I was here for it. Let me know what you thought of this review and I will see y'all in the next video. Again, d -Woo Blends. McCallum Knights. That's my old school, y'all. <laughs> See y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. I holla.